Hello everybody and welcome back once again to another rousing episode of Pathfinder with Epic and Friends. And I'm a doofus because I realized I haven't updated my Twitch stream, but who cares? Nobody watches. <laughs> anyway, when we last left our adventurers off in... God damn you. When we last left our adventures, they had finally really returned <laughs> to their homestead after a long, arduous journey. There, they recuperate after their battles with Ifrit and debate about what to do in the coming days and what to do about their ally Fionn's current endeavor. Agents of Mayhem! Ta-da! Look it! Have See? at it! <laughs> Good timing, cat. <laughs> so, in the morning, Fionn goes to meet with Dak and discuss what has been going on. During, at the homestead in her app. Yep. Well, the way that's fine. There we go. Over there. After straightening a sheaf of papers, the on start. So. I was able to negotiate trade with some of the merchants passing through. I was able to get a deal for basic essentials such as food and baking supplies for 100 gil, a discount from the 200, so long as they agree to a trade deal that would provide us with materials in exchange for roughly 25 gil per month, so we should be well stocked from here on out. Hmm. Guys, just like nodding along. Bye. Okay, that that's a lot cheaper than I thought it would be to restock, so that's wonderful. Likewise, there was an alcohol provider from Operneus. It was rather surprised to see the establishment of the pandemonium, and I arranged an exclusive trade deal with him on there, so long as he's helpful in procuring some of the more rare varieties that Skull need. No, I can't exactly exactly uh, argue with that, considering they're the ones who made the inn and then the pandemonium in the first place, so... Indeed. And you were never guess who came by recently. Oh? Fandaniel. Oh, um, we actually saw Fandaniel and Aubernaeus when we were making our way back. Ah, uh, yes. I suppose she told you about that tragic affair with the people living nearby. Yes, the ones that fell out of the tree? Indeed. Hmm. Well, I suppose it could not be helped. At least the roads are secure enough that she's not... Mm -hmm. Bringing any people who succumb to banditry or wild animal attacks to their families. That's good to hear, at least. Indeed. What's actually got? You're supposed to map. Yeah. Additionally, a number of the uh, gladiators from the arena came by to pay their respects, including Sir Ignacy. Really? Yes, he offered a, uh, he offered you a gift of rare Ishgardian books, including some recipe books, if you are interested. As soon as Fion says books, Dex's eyes just go wide. Like, <gasps> Fion reaches under the table and plops a stack down. He immediately just starts, like, paging through. I'm going to have a lot of reading to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd be pleased with that. I give me your regards. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for doing all of this. You're quite welcome. So, while all this is going on, um, there's this steady smell of things baking coming from the room adjacent. Um, you realize now that because the bakery is set up there, Skull, being the ever-practical businessman that he is, has basically cut in a vent that connects the two. So everything that like gets cooked from the bakery, that smell just wafts into the bar. The sniffs the air. Oh, I see a doll has seen the new, uh, new ingredients. Yeah, I, I helped um, set up some of the things this morning. Um, what you're currently oh, smelling you. is... What you would guess is lamb and a variety of spices, uh, jalapeno and various onion-like substances all just like being mashed together and then you can smell like butter and bread baking alongside of it and it's just all kind of like mixing together and wafting back out towards you i'm not really a big meat eater but oh smells good indeed feeling sips of morning tea So, um, are things ready to go to Amptapur, or...? I'm waiting to hear back from Han, in fact. Alright. Uh, hmm. I think I'm mostly... Yeah, going to enjoy my day off. <laughs> Although that's, As you well should, after what happened. Although that's probably going to just basically be looking over books and making sure everything is okay, and if we need anything. Alright. I... well... Here's a statement of transactions for your safekeeping. She passes a page over detailing everything that had been purchased with the hundred gil as well as the future trade deals. Okay. Well, I'll be sure to make notes of these. Ugh, I really need to go to Redon and use that coupon. Maybe I can get a couple journals. Um, it's around this time that Adol comes back around and he's got this little plate that he's holding and it looks like there's these thick pancakes on top of it along with a little tray with uh, teas sitting on it and he just kind of slides it in front of you two and he just very shyly holds his hands in front of himself like close to the groin <laughs> and he blushes for a moment and he goes um, Dad, Mom taught me this recipe not too long ago and I never had a time to try it so I thought maybe you would like it um I the top one's vegetarian oh okay she just gives a big old smile to him and just takes the top one and sniffs at it and starts gnawing on it you bite into it and it's this deserty mix of this buttery garlic bread and inside of it you can taste spinach and all sorts of these root vegetables that have been baked down and kind of basted in butter um it's soft and it just pries apart and sort of melts in your mouth and he says and Fionn, the the other ones beneath it have lamb in it i don't know if you like that or not so i made some tea for you as well there's um there's dragon fruit and rolling berry tea um i, I already sweet oh. i hope that's okay that's quite all right um well i do have tea back would you like this tea she's just kind of like staring into like the distance and just chewing on this this 
delicious food, and she's just kind of out of it. She's into anyway, her food. <laughs> it's like, I'm quite alright with lamb, so thank you. You know, happily accept. He kind of breathes out, and you see this little flicker of fire come out of his out of his mouth. And he's like, mm. he just puts his fingers to his mouth. He's stroking. He's like, hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's hot. Well, uh, we're just getting used to things. Um, That's why my computer went crazy. You're playing with the mouse in the other room. Just everything closed. Nothing. What the hell? I didn't touch anything. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm sorry, I also didn't realize that I okay. needed myself, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I want to make a terrible pun about this, but no, it's too easy. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like trying just to work on one little thing and I keep the back stuff and it's annoying me. I'm so sorry. And it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, Which so ways, I'm going to back on mute. Okay. So okay. Soul just covers his mouth and he goes, No, no, no. Um, I'm gonna go back into the bakery. I, I, it's helping me take my mind off things. And he like storms out. Oh, they. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wanted to tell him it was really good. I got too into eating it. And, um, what, what did you ask him about? Huh? Um. Wait, what was Zach asked? Referring <laughs> to? You, you asked him a question before he got startled and ran out, and he, she asked him, what did you ask him? She was zoning out. She was in a food coma oh, for a I second. Was just if he was well. Uh -oh. Normally, people don't exactly breathe fire after dealing with the Lord of the Inferno. Oh, her her ears gonna perk up at that. Oh no, he's still having issues with that. Hmm. It would seem so. Perhaps I should have a look at him and I'll maybe see. If I can stabilize the Aether alien. Well, uh, he's a... He's a blue mage, so I think they learn spells from monsters. So I think he might have learned, like, Ifrit's breath. Ah, so I see. Well, still stabilizing it could do well. No. I wonder if there's anything I can do to help. Kato, Yedrin, uh, works. Rowan, what are you guys doing? Kato's eating. <laughs> what, are you, <laughs> what are you eating, Kato? Breakfast. What's in the breakfast? <coughs> Call it. <laughs> Typical stuff, like eggs, bacon. Okay. Like bacon. Uh, what are you up to, works? Um, I am outside beating the shit out of the training dummies. Fist or spear? Spear. For a second, I <laughs> said I am. <laughs> the horse is just stabbing away. It's like, why am I so useless? <laughs> For a second, I thought he said, I'm outside being a shit. I'm like, <laughs> that's all it is. You don't need to be outside for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it does, it does help. <laughs> and Yedrin? Uh, considering I left off yesterday, probably turning some huge logs into fireplace logs and or oven logs. Okay. Uh, works. Well, hey, firewood. For me. Uh, Alright, works. Uh, with your 18 perception, you look around and you can see that the yard, for the most part, is relatively empty. 
you see Sophia more or less kind of wandering back and forth. Uh, she's kind of looks like she's kind of specifying areas that the dogs are allowed to go to and where they're not. And you can see that she's being purposefully marking areas so that they stay at least 15 to 20 feet away from every house at all times where they can manage it. Uh, likewise, you look over and you can see Ark is sitting alone on a dock. Uh, there's like four or five dogs around him, but even they, they're sitting like 10 feet away from him and he's just fishing. You realize you don't think he's moved from that spot since you guys got back. I'm gonna put the lance away and walk over to him and rag over my shoulder. What's eating, Yark? I'm gonna do something real quick. Let's have him roll a perception. As you approach, he goes, this inhales for a moment, and he goes, Well, for starters, the smell of sweat. But yeah, just got the train. He looks at you, like kind of like very casually, turns his head and goes, "Works." Hmm. I think we both know what's eating me right now. You saw what I did. Yeah. I mean, does that happen? Either, or I mean, I guess I guess I can say a lot, but no, it doesn't happen. You, you've experienced a lot. Uh, I can't say it's completely new. It's something that's happened like once you past. Mm. And he just like bites his lip and he goes once or twice. Alright. Different scale. Yeah, I just need to know in case, you know, I need to be wary of potentially stabbing. He just inhales very deeply and goes, Works, do me a favor. Then my power. The next time you ever see me do something like that, ever, I want you to grab as many people as you can and get the fuck away from me. Because in that situation, I don't have control. And I will kill you. Yeah, I noticed. And I will kill everybody else around me. So just save some lives. Noted. I mean, my, he's can't, like, he can't, he... There's a pause, and he goes, wait. <laughs> like, start to try to lift, and he's like, works? Yeah. Come out. He, you see, he's like got his hand down in the water, he's holding a, he's like grasped a basket. I walk over. I'm like, I grab on him. Alright, on three. One. Grab the basket. Ugh. Okay, I grab, the, I grab the basket. You both, uh, roll a strength check. Oh my sheet. Uh, 
You both go to jerk, and neither of you can lift up, even together. You're like, what <laughs> the hell is in this thing? Fish! What, what are you trying to catch? The king of the river or something? Works. What day is it? Hell if I know. He just blinks and looks at you and goes, Take a guess! Fish day? <laughs> okay. There's oh just this God. slow turn of his head towards you. I, I, re I, really don't, I really don't know what day it is in the game. Just say a, random, a, just say a random day of the week. <laughs> okay. Like, well, what, Saturday? I have done nothing but fish for the last two days. Oh, Jesus, man. He just looks down. He's like... Okay. On three, we're gonna try this again. Alright! I, like, dig my feet into the ground, like, alright! Uh, well, let's do this! Well, basically, because of where it is, you have to, like, lay across the dock. Oh, God. <laughs> All on you works. Why you disappear? Uh, Fio, you could hear Ark shouting. <laughs> okay, um, what is your strength modifier? Plus three? Yeah. Uh, Fion finishes her tea and steps outside. Give me one second. So you've got a plus 16 or a plus uh, 17, or I mean a 16 or a 17. I got a 18. That should be a plus 4, buddy. Oh, 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 for stat. No, um, 16. Okay, the two of you start to pull, you're like, <laughs> and you put it down. And you see this basket, this huge, like, wire basket, filled absolutely to the brim with fish of all shapes and sizes. And as you two set it down, you both just look as it, like, starts to creak on the dock a little bit. <laughs> he just looks back at you, like... the hell, man? Um, as I said, I've been fishing for the last two days. Yeah, you, you think a normal bus would, would pull it up between now and then? Hey, Ark, uh, which corner of the map is this in? Uh, hang on, sorry. I think it's down near Kato's. Yeah, it's by the pond. Down, okay, like, just want to double check. Like, by Rowan and, uh, Dax. Uh, oh, Dak, you definitely hear this, and you, you've, you like, been hearing, like, every word they've been saying. You mean, like, Rowan and Kato's is what you mean? Yeah. Well, I said Rowan and Kato's, didn't I? No, you said <laughs> Rowan and Dak. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by Rowan and, uh, Kato's home, and kind of edging closer towards Yedrin's. Okay. So, yeah, you've been hearing... Dak, you've been hearing all of this. You can't see it, but you've been hearing it. Dak just looks more and more worried. Meanwhile, Fionn, you look over, and there's maybe this... There's like this four and a half foot tall by three foot wide wire basket that you can see in the distance that is filled to the brim with fish. And you just see works and art like standing over it. The scholar's theme. <sighs> he really was standing at that dock all day and night. I was worried. Just seemed like scratching his head, like, uh. Do I throw these back? I mean, I don't think we need that many. Unless you want to eat fish for fish for the next month and a half. 
for goes, every meal. He looks back at you and goes, oh, well, I mean, we could give him to Yedra and she eats some raw. That... Uh, even then, I think I think after a certain point, she gets tired of fish. I know I would be. Yon looks over her shoulder at Deck and exchanges a knowing but nonetheless concerned glance. She has nabbed one or t one or two of those uh those nons. She's just like, bringing them with her. He's just like, at this point, Arch just like looking at works and looking at the fish. And he's like, okay, so we really need to decide what. What are we doing with the fish? Are we need to try to sell them, or are we throwing them back? I mean, oh yeah, no, sell them. I think they're, I think they're alive. Oh, no. <laughs> and he looks again. He's like, oh, well, not anymore. Okay, well, that's gonna hurt our hurt our prices a little bit. But hey, with this many, it's more, it's more quality, it's more quantity than quality. Well, wait, yeah, point. they are still. Fresh, they're just not alive. We just need to get them on ice. All right. But well, he like right. well, all right. He currently like guesstimates. He's like, this is like 550 pounds of fish. Katarina, what? Mm -hmm. Can't watch both. Turn that off and watch that, or I'm turning. Or... Actually, you put it anyway. It's 828. It's 828. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like okay. So here, here's my next question. Suppose we find enough ice to put these suckers on. How do we get them to town? So he looks at you for a I, second and then like reaches down and starts pulling out some rope. That's fine. I'm just looking at him with like the most deadpan expression. Like, boy, you do not have enough rope. <laughs> He's like, no, but I can put a sign on you. <laughs> No, you are not. He <laughs> <laughs> like stretches the rope out and grins. Go. Um. No, I am not dragging five hundred pounds of fish to a to a town a week away. Who said anything about dragging? Uh, what would you have me do to them then? I was going to tie you down and say, put a sign on you. It's like three gill per fish, and have you teleport. What makes you what makes you think I have the charisma to sell a fish to a person? I could I couldn't sell a drowning man a dock. <laughs> or, or, or no, let me rephrase. It's, it's, it's like I couldn't sell that a drowning man a boat. <laughs> oh my god. god damn it! <laughs> He's like, he crouches down while you're like thrashing in the water, and he's like, "Sell yourself a dock." <laughs> but, uh, like, yeah, somebody help! I try to be nice and help him, and this is the thanks I get. <laughs> at that I point, he just that. like, at that point, he's just starting to walk away. He's got a big, stupid grin on his face. <laughs> Is everything alright? <laughs> ah! It's like, your brother tied me here and I'm gonna smell like fish for a month! He didn't tie you. <sighs> no, you pushed me into the water. Yeah. With the fish. No, the fish are still sitting on the dock. You're fine. Oh. Um, like, Ark wants me to sell fish. We all know I'm not selling anything. We have plenty of salt to preserve them. Fish jerky. I'm, sal I'm salty enough right now! Yeah, you are. Ark walks past Fio and Dak and goes, I'm gonna <laughs> pass this out. Ark! Oh dear. <sighs> Great, now who's gonna help me get the- Yadrin! <laughs> Fion goes to help Ark up and bring him back to the inn. He's... Or maybe the next house, whichever. It's very warm. <laughs> Not I've like, seen that one, dude. Not like burning warm, just like might be running a fever. Oh. We should get inside. Yeah. So off to Dax's house with him. Probably. Mm. You know, I guess Vox is trying to get my attention. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs>
Why is that too over that way? Yells back. What's wrong? Ah! <laughs> uh, this one up here. There's too many fish. Probably comes by sees the basket of fish. Okay, that is a lot of fish. Yeah, Mark wants us to sell them, and by us I mean you. <laughs> I, I look at her. I'm like, what? You like what? You think I'm gonna sell anything? I can't sell a drowning man a boat. He says as he's like, he's just like bobbing up and down <laughs> at the pond. I was gonna say, the two of us all on. <laughs> oh no. No, because he did say he came over like with just like the towel. Do <laughs> enough. He's just staring up at you from the dock. <laughs> well, I need to probably want to get them but sold for Steve of the Tray, so, um. <laughs> Heist the basket. How much do you say it pays? 500. It's called 500 <laughs> some odd pounds. Surprisingly, I can actually carry that. I just won't be moving anywhere fast. <laughs> don't worry, we're teleporting. I was gonna say, don't worry. At this point, I think she's still letting you hold, use the uh, the belt, so... Oh. In which case... <laughs> she just picks oh. it up and walks away. I was gonna say, can't you just one in that shit at this point? Um, actually, at this point, my medium loads 800 pounds, so oh yeah. My God. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Marsh. He's so strong. Yeah, you're just lifts and, like, walks away, and you're like, what the fuck? You just, just, just like, like, just like, eat those fish, stop, Reneas. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, like, what are you talking about? This is breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no! Money! I'm keeping so. I'm keeping some of them, but yes. Just let's get these right. cool down or something so they don't rot while selling. You gotta pay the Alright, I'll, uh, right. I'll go get I'll go get some ice. You get these things ready for travel. We'll go to Opera Nance and we'll sell these things. Uh, and by we I mean you. <laughs> Dak and Fionn, when you guys lay Ark down, he's he's out cold and just snoring at this point now mm -hmm. it's it's not what you would think it uh a snore would be it's more of a i can't purr oh he's purring he's purr like, snoring he's like purring in his sleep i know that sound all too well Anyway, Fiona's oh. not actually trained in heels, so she'll be leaving that deck. Instead, she'll be handling the aetherologicals. Alright. She is using you... detect magic. Okay. While you're doing that, I need you to do one other thing for me. Yeah? I need you to roll a perception, then I need you to roll both a fortitude and a will save. <laughs> You done fucked up. Okay. Okay, so, Fio, you go to start messing with his Aether, and as you do so, you're managing it alright, you're kind of calming and soothing him down, and the next thing you know, uh, okay, so you guys put him on that bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fionn, you get thrown into the closet. <laughs> Just, boom. And as you close your eyes from the impact and you get flung backwards, you reopen your eyes, and the only thing you can see for a second is this just huge... Basically, the eye is the size of you. Just this gleaming yellow eye just staring at you and suddenly everything around you feels hot and humid all at once there's this heady smell of earth and decay around you and then you can smell kind of like the ozone burning in this sulfuric sort of combination and it's almost this sensory overload and then the eye sort of retracts and pulls away and 
because your perception was so high and your knowledge arcana was so high, you can see these four very distinct uh, aether flows just kind of ebbing and weaving through his body all at once. And you can see one's glowing this brilliant purple, another one in a crimson red, yet another one in this bright lush green. And then you see this very faint one hovering beneath all of them, kind of like a punctuation point or the bottom of a question mark in this soft white blue and it just pulsates while the other three are like violently mashing against one another and expanding and then contracting back down and then flaring up again and again and again. Are you alright, Fionn? <clears throat> I'm... I'm well. I think I see the problem. Fionn struggles to get back up to under her feet. You feel... Oh, that's going to be the mark. You feel six sets of hands suddenly, like, wrapped around your waist and on your shoulders. And you go to look back to see what's touching you and there's nothing there and then suddenly you're back up on your feet. Jack was helping her up too. Uh, I sure. believe huh? I wandered a little too close to the aether flows. Uh, oh. Just looks over at Ark. Yeah, um... As you go to look it over at him, Dak, I need you to roll a perception. Did you note that as he's like laying there asleep, you can see that the around his head, the pillows are like bursting out into this little field of flowers and they're starting to sprout bubbles that are popping out over him that are releasing this swing this Almost sickly sweet scent. Uh, 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 kind of rushes over. It's like, what's going on? I was wondering what that other aether flow was. Oh. She just starts, like, petting his head a little bit and putting the barest amount of water on her hands to try and, like, cool his head down. Um, roll a reflex. Uh, boom. You hear the <laughs> and pull your hand away as you watch as the water that you put on him basically evaporates. Oh, that's not good. Indeed it isn't. I fear he's host no less than three primal life forms at this moment. And Sorry? his own internet channels are suffering greatly for it. Three. Uh... I could identify Quetzalcoatl and Ifrit with reasonable certainty, but I was not certain about the last one. Hey, Ark. The bubbles. No, um, don't. Be that. Sorry, Fionn. Um, I was going to ask, would she know if it was something from, like, say, the time they were at the Viera or anything she like would. that? Okay. Especially with the flowers at this point. Yeah. I th think it was when we were over at the Viera's woods. I can't say I could identify the primal offhand, but... Hmm. Well, first and foremost, we should definitely try to buttress his own etheric channels. Uh, how, how would we go about doing that? Fionn taps her chin. Mind you, while you're talking about this, Fionn, you're watching 
these aether flows just kind of flow and bicker amongst themselves and you do see the that faint white continuing to pulse and it grows stronger as you watch and the more you watch the more you realize that the aether flows that you recognize as primals are actually very well contained and are almost being strangled but they lash out at anything that touches at them I don't, I don't know how to cool him down. The water just evaporates. Mm. I'll keep him under observation for now. It may just be a case of exhaustion for all we know, and his own energy levels will return to normal in time. I mean, he was sitting out on the docks for how many days straight? I, I don't know. When did he get back? It was like three days ago, right? Yeah, he got back for three days. He took a nap when he got back, and then the next day he was out on the dock, and he didn't leave that spot for the next two days. Well, he returned three days prior, but after he took a nap, he went to the docks and never left. Oh, wait. He never left. Never no. left. And knowing him, he didn't eat a damned thing. Indeed. I fear it may be, well... Fionn looks away. Maybe like that time in... The Adders. Hmm. Oh, this is where I'm red. I cannot say anything for, for what is... Aetheric levels were at that time, but right now at least he seems to be containing it well enough. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'll just set these here, and she puts down two of the non-things that are in like a little towel to try and keep them warm. <sighs> and I hope he just wakes up and eats them. Indeed. Any road, I'll keep a watch on him. Do let me know if Han comes. You just see his body just sit up straight. Uh, the eyes open and there's no color. Arthurus? His head turns towards That's... the man. Like one of his hands just comes up and grabs it. Yeah. And just eats. He's on auto, it seems. She picks up the other non and kind of holds it out. <laughs> I wish I'm miming at this point, but just wide-eyed, looks at you for a second, kind of cocks the head, and leans forward uncomfortably close to you. She gives like this big smile, like a big warm smile, trying to look non-offensive. <laughs> like, sniffs you, then goes back to the non, sniffs it, and starts eating out of your hand. This is new. <laughs> you can take it. <laughs> well, then. Silence and it reaches out and takes it from you. Okay. I don't think I've seen this before. At that point, as soon as he's done, he like looks around. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Sniffing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just, like holds up one of his arms. He's like. <laughs> and he just before either of you could stop him, naked and out in the river. Oh, oh hells! Well, at least he's getting a bath. I guess, but I hope. 
<laughs> I think you may be trying to get more fish. I hope not. Do you two follow him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> follow him. just fast walks out the door. <laughs> you actually see him just standing out in the river. Um, about up to his navel. And he's spraying himself down with water. And the next thing you see is he holds a hand up, and there's just a cloud over him that's causing it to rain. And he scoops another hand, and just the entire water around him just lathers, and he just soaps himself. So he's still got, like, the blank eyes. Yes. His eyes are, at this point, uh, entirely blue and glowing, and you can only see this very faint sliver of yellow in the dead center of them where the iris should be. Well, at least you're taking care of yourself. Hmm. Perhaps I should get a journal as well. Head just slowly turns back toward you. Uh, roll a perception deck. Perception, that's my best skill besides diplomacy. Damn. Um, at this point, Dak, you can see that there's a pair of horns starting to like grow out of his head that are glowing. Perhaps well contained was a bit strong of a word. <laughs> and by that, I mean, they look like Pajali horns, except they're just glowing like bright white. Are you in there enough to actually speak to me, or is this just going to be a new thing? There's a blink. And looks at you for a second. Then cocks the head both ways like a confused dog. I say this. Idling to say this. He starts washing his hair. You have horns, Ark! <clears throat> Well, at least it's relatively benign. Uh, one hope. As he finishes, as he finishes up, he go. He like, looks at the two of you, and he floats straight out of the water. There's a burst of fire, and he's dry, and he floats back into the house, completely naked. This rubs on her head. She just sighs and goes back inside. She <laughs> yeah, shakes her head and follows. You two get back inside, and as you walk in, you see what look to be like half a dozen white glowing shadows that are standing upright, and they're like night dressing arc down. The horns are starting to fade and all the aether is going away. And they lift the sheets of the bed up and they tuck him in and they fluff the pillow and they light like little scented candles around him. <laughs> and then they just all fade away as he's tucked in. <laughs> Perhaps when Han gets here, we should have a word with him about this. That would be because very good. it is beyond anything I Ever known. I'm I'm gonna sit with him for a little while, okay? Um you just go go I'll I'll remember him to your account. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Just goes to hang out with Ark for a little bit. <laughs> Dion gives her a supportive pat on the shoulder before leaving. <laughs> and Rowan, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just seeing all this out the window like <laughs> the magic like, bullshit. Dragon. I got my own magic bullshit. I'm, I'm just saying dragon. Okay, <laughs> what are you doing with your dragon right now? <laughs> 
I don't know, cuddling him. Looking oh. at him. Um, Damning him. You've basically got the dragon held like you would hold a newborn at this very moment. And it's just looking up at you with these bright these bright eyes. They're black and they're speckled with gold. And it's a little hard to tell where it's looking at the moment. But you can tell all of its attention is focused on you. And you can see uh, its underbelly is still like bright pink from just being born. And it's soft uh, and gives off this little warm radiance. Its tail is flicking back and forth and every now and then wraps around your wrist. I'm just gonna ooh and ah, because he's so damn cute. <laughs> um, and it, as you ooh and ah, it, it coos back at you. No. <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna just like talk, to, uh, I don't know. He started talking to me before, so I'm gonna ask him if he needs anything, if I'm doing anything wrong. I'd be like that mom who's like, Oh my god, what did I do? Am I breaking you? Type of mom. He's just blinking at you, and then he looks over at, like, Kato's plate of food. Get your own. Oh, wow, Kato. And why am I having breakfast with Kato in the first place? <laughs> because you're sitting at the bar and that's where I am? I wasn't sitting at the bar by myself. <laughs> I wasn't around anybody. I wasn't sharing dragon time. No way. <laughs> well, that's where your token is. <laughs> um, my token. I think that's where we were last time. I'll move to your house. I'm at my house, and if he's saying he's hungry, he's getting my bacon. I will share my bacon. My bacon. <laughs> That's the only way you'll get her to share bacon. <laughs> it's if you're a pet I'm, dragon, yeah. tub because it wasn't being associated with my sheet properly. Can you copy back over? Uh, Can't you just drag it off of your sheet? I tried that, but it still wasn't associating with it, so Aww. something's bugged. It's still not associating, but it's back on the thing. It seems to be working now, thanks. No problem. Um, Rowan, as you give the little dragon like a strip of bacon, it's like, oh. just chews through it. Like, holds it like an otter. It's like, oh. And I'm gonna say, don't tell anybody I shared my bacon because they're gonna want my bacon. Only people <laughs> have my bacon. Okay, mommy. <gasps> oh. I cuddle him. I give him another piece of bacon. <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. Um. Uh, okay. So about. I and then we're going to go outside. Okay. You, sit on my porch. You head outside and you sit on your porch and you see... Around this time, it's when you look over and you see Ark just glowing over in the river, like, naked, having summoned a rainstorm over himself and it's made the river turn into soap. Just <laughs> washing himself. With Dak and Fionn just kind of like... <sighs> I'm just going to shake my head. Nope. Nope. Not, nope. Not today, Satan. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna focus on my baby. They can focus on Ark. I want nothing. <laughs> I'm Actually, it's pronounced Satin. God damn it! <laughs> Ever. Get out. I'm just gonna sit there and and uh, I'm I got a chair, so I'm leaning back and I'm sitting on the on on the little thing, enjoying some uh, enjoying the fresh air with the baby. Okay. So, this being relatively early in the morning, I'm going to say about six, 
not six. The hell? Eight. It's eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, about six hours goes by, and a couple of carts start pulling up towards the uh, towards Pandemonium. Uh, at this point, you just hear a boop, and can see Han has appeared, like apparated, at the front of it, kind of dusting himself off. I'm gonna get up and walk over to Han. Han immediately leaves the house to greet him. He's like, "Oh, hi. hello. How is everybody?" Doing well, I, I I guess for the most part. There's some weird things going on, lately. you know. Other than that we're okay. We're made. Yes, there were some matters with Osiris. He looks at the two of you and goes, "When are weird things not happening with you people?" Exactly. That's, That's fair. Why I am. We'll let you know. And he goes. He like scratches the back of his head, and he goes. <sighs> So what's wrong this time? And as he goes to say that, you suddenly, Fionn, you just feel a weight hit your back. Where a lot of things are getting and weird. you just hear this, Argh! I missed you. Failed <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and oh, on, that's a lot. It's not playing for me. God. Damn it. Let's see if I can find one that does work. Why don't you give Rowan a... Let me greet Rowan as well. She's been gone longer. At this point, like, he's looking up at you, and you see that Percival is already, like, slid over and is kind of making a sweeping bow at her. Yeah, I'm about back. <laughs> the thirst police have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and now my, um, my wonderful, my, my, my dragon is still out there, right? Mm, it's up to you. Your baby? Yes. My baby is still out. Um, so you can see the suns are all coming out. The only one who, like, isn't smiling or seems interested at all is Talison, who's just kind of, like, looking around the place, and he's, like, giving a small nod to everything. No, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, I'll use this one. But when is he ever? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. He's just kind of... He's just got his hands folded. He's just nodding at everything. So, yeah. I like this place. At that point, Percival just kind of goes, Lady Rowan, it is wonderful to see you again. Hello, Percival. How are you? I'm doing well, doing rather well. Oh, we've been... <laughs> he just kind of laughs. If you can believe it, we actually got a few contracts after everything that happened. So... Oh, fantastic. You know, been been busy, but we've been working. Work is always good. We actually just got back from a, a few things, so uh, we've so far only gotten about a, a little bit of sleep since um, since the trip back here. No, well, take well. a day off. Well, rest is always a good thing, and it's good to see you well. And he kind of turns around and bows to Fiona, and like, that's a lot. Let go of her. And he just, like, pouts and lets go. And I'm just standing here holding a baby dragon, you know. He seems... Like you do. He just seems <laughs> unperturbed by that. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're holding a dragon. All right, cool. <laughs> I uh, wave over it. Uh, hi, Lancelot. Has Sion seen the dragon yet? No. 
This is the first time you're I seeing heard, it. You know, there's the baby in my arm. The baby dragon in my arms. Rowan? When and where did you get that? Well, it's a very interesting story. Uh, remember that dragon that I told you about in the astral plane? Yes. It's a big one that's, you know, world... Oh, you know, the world-killing dragon. Yeah, it was my dragon that came out and defeated Ifrit and left me a baby. At that point, you do actually see, like, her reaction from all the Sons of the Calamity and Han, who just look at you like, What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I now have a big dragon. And... Fion stares blankly. <laughs> I have no clue what the heck happened, but apparently the dragon from the astral plane from Heidelin, uh, the Trials of Heidelin, um, is real. And is watching and protecting me at this point. If it wasn't for, if it, if it wasn't, if it, I, I, I was doing nothing. I was so useless during that fight. You can't fight fire with fire. And then all of a sudden, fire was fought with much, much bigger fire, and he was left in, um, he was left in ashes. And out of the ashes was this beautiful creature. The own. Opens her mouth as if to say something, raises a finger, closes her mouth. Then it then it looks at Fiona. It's empty. <gasps> oh, and, oh my and, goodness! And, Fiona and, quickly covers her mouth and looks away. So, uh, That's too but, cute. but he's not always out. There are um. There, uh, he he. When when we're in populated areas like in Arbonaeus or when we were in Drybone, he didn't come out. He he was inside of me when he was when we're with people I trust and know. Here he is. At that point, like Han walks up and like goes to like he looks at you for like affirmation as he like brings a hand out to like. Examine the dragon. I don't, um, he's cool to the touch of everybody else now, right? Uh, that's out of character. He's still a little warm, but I mean, it's not a burn warm. It's like, it's like, it's like holding a slightly warm child or somebody who's been sitting in the sun all day. <laughs> when, when, uh, Han, when he first came, he burned, um, burned Camilla because she went to go touch him. I was the only one that was able to touch him. He's still warm, but he's not dangerous. Han, like, reaches out to touch him, and the baby dragon, like, looks at Han and skirts away and tucks his head up under your breast, and the next thing you know, you can feel the thump inside of you, and he's gone. Okay. I don't know why that happened. Well, then... I like, suppose it's good that he can do that. Han's just like, uh, well, I I guess maybe too many people? Or maybe he just doesn't like to be touched. Perhaps so. I felt nervous. Possible. In any case, it's very good that he can do that since, well, I mean... As recently as two days ago, we had a member of the Heavens Ward pass through. Oh boy, it's gonna be fun. Well, his visit was quality enough. He came by to drop off some books for Dak. Give her his respects. I gave him her regards. If the impartial retainer, as always. Mm. Any mode. At that point, Siegfried is just like, um, like tapping his hands. He's like, well, um, interesting to see a dragon. It's been years since the last time I saw one. 
I'm sure Percival and Lancelot and Galahad and even Taliesin all feel the same way. It's just kind of like, well then. Yeah, I think there's yes. a lot of things I have to figure out about my... <laughs> Help me. He just holds up a hand. A little, little, like, uh, kind of flabbergasted a bit, and I'm still waiting for the dragon to come back out. <laughs> so, um, Han, we, we, uh, we need to have a, a serious conversation about all of that. You see, at this point, Han is dressed more like a black mage than usual. Like, he's got a hood, but he's got it down, so you can see his, um, sort of ending of teenage face. The horns are kind of exposed, and you can see they're kind of tip blue at the edges now. He's looking at you and examining. You can see, like, the tinges of red through his hair. Uh, and as you look down at his robes, you can see it's... It's not ornate, per se, but it's very well made. And kind of slides down, then opens at the bottom, so he can push hands into pockets and he goes um well depending on what you want to ask me I can do my best I am very sure that I'm gonna tax everything <laughs> once we have this conversation because I have no clue um, I'm completely lost he goes well you might be stretching even my best of knowledge, I am not a scholar of the Draconic or history or anything. I know a good deal about Void Scent and magic. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, even though he appears and reappears and, and he's inside of me right now, I, he, I can feel him inside of me right now. Um, That's still quite no. interesting. <laughs> I don't believe Void says, I don't know what the Lancelot's just looking between you two, like, super confused, and he's like, I smell cookies, and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, draft one fucking before he left. You just see this... You just see this tiny knight just running across the field. Next thing you hear is cookies. <laughs> oh dear, I bet it could help it all out. Han, um, considering the circumstances, while you might not have any insight to shed on this particular situation, there was a rather different event regarding our sailors about. His aether flow, to say the least, that perhaps you could shed some light on. Well, He's that's... up with that quieter house, if you'd like. I head right over in that direction. Curious, though. Um, I'll do what I possibly can, but considering his condition, and though I am loath to give this suggestion, knowing everything else. You may have to take him to the other Pajali. Sure. No. You're going to have to convince Dak of that, not me. He just nods and starts walking away. At that point, Percival like looks at you, Rowan, and <laughs> scratches the top of his head and goes, Um, Right. So I see that you all have been busy. Yeah, I, I think that's an understatement. Mm -hmm. We got captured. We saw Primal. Okay. We saw in ashes. And now we're here. He goes, <laughs> Well, at least you're safe. Theon, yes. roll a perception. Mm. 
Also, how fast did you go over there? She briskly walked. Okay. You come through the door. Do you say anything as you're coming through? No, she's just silently taking stock of the situation first. Alright, you push through, and as you come in, you can see that Lancelot has bowled a doll over. He is now laid like half sitting up on the uh, on the ground. There's crumbles of cookie and icing like all over him and on the floor. And in the rush, the two of them have basically pushed their faces together and are kissing at the moment. What? <laughs> I'll give you two moments. <laughs> it's all she like that. just ah! turns about, thinks it closes the door pointedly. By <laughs> you just see like a red, like as you walk out, you just see a red face to door, like no, 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 no. Like. Who? Who? What? <laughs> just, Dole just walks out, like, just covered in, like, cookie dough and icing and crumbles, and he just grabs you, and he's like, THIS IS WHAT I LOOK LIKE! Don't worry, I know it's not what it looks like. <laughs> Hysterical, <not> like, red. <laughs> He unsnaps your fingers and pesticides it all clean. <laughs> that said, I'm still telling Dequa. She might get a giggle out of it. Yeah, you see his eyes slit in front of you. <sighs> oh, don't worry, I won't. Let you go. He's like, <laughs> Dion pats a doll on the head gently. She can't help but tease him a little. It's just so tempting. You feel pin bricks on your head. He's just staring at you. Yun slowly withdraws her hand. Objection no. Well, walks into the end. I suppose I. I suppose I owe you that much at least. Yon goes in, both to clean up the bakery and hopefully stop Lancelot from completely destroying. He's just Is sitting on. He's like sitting on the floor. He's he's blushing a little, and you see he's got his his fingers covered in some of the icing. And he just looks at you as he puts it puts his finger into his mouth and like licks it off. Oh, I feel. Lot. you can't do that to the cookies. I'm trying to sell them. Well, he's like, he's like licking what was off of like his face, <laughs> essentially. And he looks at Still. you like, I'm oh, sorry. He tasted good though. It's... Well, I'm sure he'd appreciate the compliment, but nonetheless. It was rather disruptive of the bakery's operations, so she snaps her fingers, prestigitates Lancelot clean as well. Could you go and rejoin the others? I'm sure Skull would be willing to serve you something. I guess. Sorry. Calming. Thank yeah. you. And he walks out and he stops and gives you another hug. Beyond hugs it. Lancelot back. And just leaves. And Fionn goes to grab the broom. At that point, Talison comes by. He just leans against the door and closes it behind him. And he goes, Thanks for that. It's quite alright. He's. You know what, I don't even want to talk about it. Maybe if you ply me with a few drinks, I can tell you a few things later. <laughs> it slips out the door. 
goodness, that was so subtle that I may have missed the implication oh. if I wasn't paying any attention. <sighs> she telepathically tells Skull to start up a tab for Talison. <laughs> She's not letting him get off of it. Skull's like... Okay. He's like, Are you okay, dear? I'm quite alright, just a lot has been happening in just a few short bells. Tends to happen when we have visitors. Indeed. Connor, stop eating with your hands! <laughs> no. <laughs> I shan't. <laughs> bacon. What am I supposed to eat it with? A fork. Who eats bacon with a fork? Exactly. The same people that scoop up bacon with their scrambled eggs? Oh! Okay, fair enough. But why ruin bacon with scrambled eggs? <laughs> you probably hang in those, well, dear. I think Warren just, I think Rome just got personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I mean, yeah. people that make a uh, make a bacon and egg sandwich. You're still picking it up with your hands. Yes, but you're not like scooping. <laughs> I was more like trying to say like. Kato had like a hatch, and he was like palming the entire thing and eating it that way. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so Works and Yadra never actually left. We were just putting the fish on ice. <laughs> so this will be interesting if Works comes out and sees the the Sons of Calamity there. Yeah, the only, well, the only one on the yard at this point is uh... me and Percival. Well, they'll actually Percival left to go make sure everything was okay. So the only two that are out there are Galahan and Galahad. Oh, Galahad's gonna be extra, extra happy to see me. Last time he saw me, I pierced him with my spear. Okay. So I want to go outside. Go outside and be like, um, I hear commotion. What's going on? To get all right. Um, uh, works well. One d twenty. Wow. Thank you, Rolls. You suddenly just hear this You <laughs> You just get hit upside the head oh, with a hammer. <laughs> Wait, I hit the head with a hammer? Yeah, Galahad just turns around and hits you with this hammer. My healer Oh! <laughs> what the shit, man? That was a pretty spear through my chest! It was a tournament! What's the entire point? It just stops and he goes, uh... <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> like, how you been though? It's like, I got a new hammer. Nice, yeah. It feels pretty heavy. Is, uh, is the entire crew with you, or did you uh, come solo? Take 23 points of damage, by the way, works. Ow! He <laughs> 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 goes, Yeah, yeah, everybody's here. Ah. I haven't seen you guys in a while, so it's been a... What, uh, what everyone else is up to? I... Most of them are just working. At that point, mm. Galahad just comes over and, like, quietly puts Galahad into a full Nelson. And he's like, <laughs> Galahad, so you're sorry. Just a struggling blonde, like, no! No! He's like, Galahad. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be as upset, but, I mean, if you're gonna hit me, at least challenge me first. You say it's like one of your horns it's like looks like it's starting to crack. Uh question. <sighs> Can I see that from my porch? <laughs> yes. 
I'm going to tap Millie with a heal spell and send her over to works. Okay. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm all for getting hit, but, you know, at least challenge a guy first. Next thing you know, works is like, there's like a tiny fluttering fairy next to you. It's like, hey, stupid. <laughs> Woke me up from my nap for nothing. <laughs> Gets 70 <laughs> points of healing. I'm not the one who did the hitting. She goes, the horn's fixed, though. She looks at you for a second and goes, But you're usually the one that instigates. Then she looks and goes, Oh, it's this moron. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's pretty bad when you get called dumber than me. <laughs> wow. She lifts up and uh, flies away, but leaves a lucky charm on uh, the top of Galahad's head. At that point, <laughs> Galahad just lets go, pushes away, and he's like, Nope! Melee, gross! <laughs> <sighs> I don't have any. <laughs> like, so, uh. Where did, my, where did my good friend Percival run off to? I believe he's at the bar. Probably trying yeah. to make sure that Lancelot doesn't, you know, Lancelot. <laughs> do, I, do anything, do anything that's, you know... He's already Lancelotted. <sighs> At this point, it is just Galahad speaking, as Galahad has, like, moved over to the river, and he's now furiously scrubbing his hair. <sighs> Never a dull moment with you guys, is it? I was about to say the same thing to you. Oh yeah, but that that comes with that comes with the name Ages of Mayhem. We can we we make we make it a, a very clearly apparent that you know things get interesting around us. He just blinks at you a few times. Duly noted. Hey, at least we have fun. Fair. <laughs> he just starts walking off. Ah. ah, she goes to had a Percival. No lot of stuff seen him. By this point, Adol has come back into the bakery, and Han has made his way over to Dak. Just going back to my house. <laughs> it's like, Rowan's like, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm gonna go home. Maybe my baby will come out. <laughs> I'm gonna go home play my dragon. Yeah. And it was discussed that since a lot of hours passed, the agents over at Todd's tap sorting the fish. Fish to Todd's direction. Yeah, Dax basically going, sell that one, that one's good for food, sell that one, that one's too small, that goes with the dogs with the fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Just standing there and like Hans like... D he walks in, he goes, eh. sees all the fish, he's like, Oh God, have I been dra have I been press ganged into helping sort fish? No, 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 no. Yeah, just asked for my opinion. That's all. This waves. Just looks at Yedrin, Looks at you. He goes. That's. That's a lot of fish. Arcelis came home three days ago. Slept for a day. And was at the docks catching fish for the last two days. Just blinks and he's like, Remind me to take him deep sea fishing. He might enjoy it. Sounds interesting, at least. Uh, anyway, um, I'm guessing Fionn sent you over here? Yes, yes, you did. Uh, apparently there was something I needed to examine. Oh, yeah. She hasn't actually handled any of the fish. She was just, like, pointing at the fish for Yedrin as, like, she held them up. Okay. <laughs> and, she, and she just leads them into, like, Ark's room. At this point, because of how many fish there were and the fact you guys were sorting them, the couches are, like, pushed up against the edge of the wall. Oh, no, 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 they were doing it out, out front. <laughs> <laughs> out front? There's this big sheet just laid out, and you're like, this 
putting them into different ice piles? Yes. <laughs> okay. so I could just see Yedrin starting to do that in the in the living room. She's like, nope, 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 outside. <laughs> Part of the reason why Millie was so pissed is because Millie's like been sneaking the small ones. Mm-hmm. He's like, so where should I go? This way. Leads to Ark's room. He walks in. He's like, okay. Well, and then he's like, he looks over, looks dead at Ark for a moment, and he goes, oh. Mm hmm. Oh my. <laughs> so he spies the two of them walk up, walks away. He, since it's not going to help sort of fish, just sort of things back, grabs one, starts eating. <clears throat> I can't help but think, like, Yedrin sits down to eat a fish, and then Millie and Scotch both kind of saddle over and go, So, fish. <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> sit on either shoulder. Yes. It's like, <laughs> so. <laughs> Gonna share? See the amount of fish while just gives them their own. Yes. <laughs> just fly away. Uh. <laughs> uh, he goes... Han looks at you, goes, um, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, he is harboring Aether from at least Ifrit, Quasaquadal, and a primal I cannot remember the name of. He just blinks a few times. He, like, he's just looking at you, like, Deadpan expression, just frowning at you. Linking back at him. Why did you not call me sooner? He looks back down at Ark and he goes, Um. Okay, like, I get the three primals and everything in that. Why does he have them in a stranglehold? That's just the way Ark is. And I'm pretty sure I'd prefer him having them in a stranglehold than them than them having him in a stranglehold. She's eye twitch. He's like, uh, he's like scratching his head. And he goes, "Okay, Dak. Um, what do you want to know? What do you want me to do? Because I this is fucking weird. No, I know it is." And I'm not a but jolly. I can't help him with jolly things. I'm a weight mage. I'm not a Bajali. He looks at you. And he opens his mouth. And I don't want to take him to Gridania. And starts to think for a second. And then he just mouths something at you. Um, Roll linguistics. Oh god. That's like my worst skill. It's not trained either. Okay, so he mouths the following to you, Dag. Okay. She just nods. He just holds his face and he goes, I don't, I don't really know much about primals at all, beyond what most people do. I don't think that you need to go see the Pajali for this. Uh, I don't think they'd be able to help, to be perfectly honest. I... In my very long lifespan, I have heard of only two other instances of individuals drawing in more than one primal for this sort of situation. 
and sadly all records of them are gone. Yeah, I didn't want him to be among them. Well, I don't mean that they're... Come. Yes. yes. Dead or whatever, I... I don't know where they are, to be perfectly honest. I'm just saying... Records of them have a habit of disappearing. And I don't know if it's... The military... Or... Something they have a habit, else. They have a habit of disappearing and being covered up. And I'm pretty sure it is the military. Because that's what they do. Jack. Mm. These two predate Rodanya. Mm. So if that's the case... Wow. He crosses her arms. <sighs> I just don't know what to do. He's... He's burning hot, and I'm pretty sure that's Ifrit. There were flowers blooming over his pillow earlier? That's the third one. I don't know. Han has stopped talking and he's looking over at Ark. Who has now gotten up and is somehow even more quietly than he normally is. Is tucking a flower into your hair? Just looks up at him. There's Hi. color to his eyes at the moment, but he's like got this groggy look on his face. His ears are sort of pinned back. And he's like, "Hi." Hi. Do you have a good nap? Well, you ate, so you ate and you slept, that's good. He looks at you. Where's the toilet? Right over there. <laughs> she just points at a door. And he's like, thanks. He just walks in and shuts the door behind him. Hi. Han <clears throat> looks at that. He looks out towards the bakery. And then he thinks for a moment and he goes, Your family's weird. Yes. Yes, they are. I'd say I'm stuck with them, but I enjoy it, so... <laughs> or at least I enjoy their company. Not the weirdness sometimes. And he looks up for a moment and goes, That explains so much about your group. <laughs> she just kind of blinks a bit and gets this kind of like furrowed brow and she's like, Oh my god, it does. <laughs> uh, face palms. At that point, picks... he, he like pulls a pipe out and offers it to you. I no, uh, uh, no. And he puts it to his mouth, and bubbles start coming out. <laughs> <sighs> Takes it and bubble, 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 bubble. Do you do that, and then there's like these little purse that kind of roll down your throat. And next thing you know, you're really calm and happy. Bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. That actually feels really nice. He goes, yeah, it's my fairy pipe. Oh. Huh. Okay, it sounds fine to me. And he blows through it again, he picks up one of the bubbles and puts it in your hair. Oh, uh, I have a flower in a bubble. He just kind of reaches up for the flower and looks at it. It's, um... The center of it is bright red, and it's like giving flames off with the pattern. And then it turns green and yellow across with like little purple tips. 
Huh. It's a chameleon flower. Huh. But so long as the bubble's sitting on top of your head, you find it impossible to be upset. You're just happy. No, she's not upset. She's just kind of like, huh. She's confused. <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts of a doll kissing you. <laughs> uh, Han? Yeah? How much are one of those pipes? He looks at it and he goes, Uh, I mean, this is my only one. Mm, that's fine. Go, go. Um, fine. He goes, I mean, if you go find the sylphs, they make them. Huh. I've run across a couple of sylphs. I'll have to ask them sometime. I think I traded them a gallon of, uh, what was it? Milk sap? I think that was the word for it. Milk sap for one. Hmm. Yeah, sounds about right. Kind of pockets at the end. It's a nice thing. She's just kind of like just sitting there smiling now, or standing there smiling. <sighs> I think I needed that actually. Thank you. He's like, yeah. Art comes out and he's like, looks back, starts closing the door, and just makes a fire inside. He's like, don't go in there. Uh, uh, I don't think I have the house fireproof, though. Hey, he's basically, he's done the equivalent of, like, lit a match inside the room. Lit a candle. He's like, don't go in there for a little bit. Why would I go in there? That's your bathroom. He it, it just looks at you and he goes, Did you build me a room in your house? I mean... Why not? I figured you needed a place to stay and I wouldn't know where you wanted to be. Uh, and I didn't know there would be an inn. She's just kind of like deadpanning, kind of looking just... Hmm. He's like blinking now, he's like... Thank you. If you don't want it, that's okay. No, 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 I was... Forgive me for this, I was expecting you to be like Charlie with money. You're like Charlie? Tight. Why would I want to be tight with money? It does no good if it's just in a bag. I... I'm gonna go back to sleep now. <laughs> I didn't think that sounded weird. It doesn't. It doesn't sound weird at all. It just makes my heart hurt a little. Hmm. I am a bad Lollafell. No. You're a wonderful Lollafell. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> And he looks over and he's like, looks at Han, he's like, I have no idea who the fuck you are, but I'd prefer if you didn't watch me sleep. And he goes, she just lays down. We were trying to figure out why your acers were being weird, but okay, that's cool. He goes, primals, magic yes. bullshit. I'll bring you more non, how's that? He's like, uh, I'll go get it when I'm hungry. Alright, I figured you would just eat it in your sleep again. He's like, Oh, sleep eating? Yes. And he's like, Aah! And we're, we're going to go now. Come on, Han. <laughs> calmly walks out. Han's like, ah. Looks at you and he goes, Okay. He gets zappy if he gets angry. You don't want him to be zappy. 
And he goes, I don't think that was angry. No, but if you did irritate him. Han walks out. And he looks at Yedrin, like, still going through the fish. And he goes, <sighs> And just walks away. <laughs> He's like, okay. I'm gonna go talk to Fiona. I think she's more sane. Yeah. All right. Thank you again, Han. Just a spite, Han. Is <laughs> even. Han's like, I really didn't do anything. It's the thought that counts. Okay. You at least tried. At that point, Han just walks into the bar, like walks over to Skull. <laughs> Kato is sitting with a uh, dinner at this point. <laughs> and the sons of the Calamity are all sitting around. They're just having drinks. Uh, we'll go ahead and say Works and Siegfried are playing in pool. Jack's going to help you during the sort things, but then she's probably going to go to the bakery and just help out. Um, though Han does poke his head in the bakery and goes, Oh, Theo. Yes? I was trying to tell you this earlier, but... Things. <laughs> so, the path to Amphidor is open now, whenever you all are ready. Excellent. I'll get my things together then, and I'll check with everyone else. Feel free to make yourself at home in the meantime. Uh, Hans, like, after the greeting I just had, I think I need a good beverage. Skull will serve you something. <laughs> Thank you. Just walks away. And at that point, Dak would probably go into the bakery. Just waits for him to go. <laughs> you don't telepathically tell Skull. I assume I don't need to tell you this, but you don't need to start a tab for Han. Skull's like, I would never charge a friend. <laughs> Indeed. At that point, Dak comes in and. You look at her, Fionn, and the bubble on the top of her head, another smaller one, like, forms on the top of it, making, like, a horn, and it floats over to you. Um... And she has a multicolor changing flower in her hair. Wasn't this from Ark? I... Is he doing well? Oh, he woke up, and... Was surprised I made a room for him. Um, he's doing better. I think he just really needed to rest. Well, that's fortunate. And Han really really let me to. have a pipe. Oh. As she says this, the bubble like lands in your hair, Fionn. So, um... Did you ever figure out what this was? She points at the bubble and then at the flower. Um, Fionn, you have the option to make a will save right now. Do you make it or no? <laughs> she makes it. Okay, roll a will save. Oh, the bubbles are from Han's pipe. That is one point lower than you needed to make a save. <laughs> oh, uh. As the bubble lands there, you're like, oh, that's nice. And you're just flooded with nothing but happy thoughts of, like, cuddle time with Skull when his dad gave him, like, human form for three days. Um, <clears throat> just quiet times with him or spending time with Dak and reading books and just calm, soothing influences. Fuck, it's my bliss spell. <laughs> oh, well. The flower's from Ark. Ah, so I see. That's good. I don't 
I don't know why, but flower. My question. <laughs> just like to, in on. <laughs> just like two people. Just like two people that are st like stoned out of their mind. Like, yeah, flowers be cool. Everything's <laughs> beautiful and awesome right now. So, you and clap your hands together. Now that the bakery's cleaned back up, let's try making something. Why was it messy? Oh, you know, Lancelot. <gasps> Lancelot a little rascal here. he is. Oh, he is, yes. He's in the bar. Did you see, yeah. see a doll come around the counter? He's still red-faced, and he just bumps into Fiona. Next thing you know, he just picks Dak up and pins her against the wall and starts kissing her. <laughs> well, then, I'll leave you two to it. <coughs> Sloppy makeouts. <laughs> Totes into it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Han. You don't open this your inhibitions. Pandemonium. Good day, everyone. I hope everything is going excellently for you. You come in and then you look and you're like, oh no, and the bubble just spreads and starts floating to everybody. <laughs> oh no. And we're on the bar, aren't we? I would say at this point, everyone went Rowan. And maybe Yedrin. <laughs> Hello everyone, please uh, don't go to the bakery for an hour. I was gonna say, if I would, <laughs> I probably would have gone to the bar after cleaning up if you finished the fish. Oh. It's a lot of fish, but if you... Well, if, Tal if Talt was done, I'd probably be done. Yeah. Alright, at, at that point you just walk in you're like, Hey, do bubble hit you. <laughs> you may choose to make a will save or not. Dedrid is unaffected. <laughs> I'm not gonna make the will save because I'm probably gonna lose it anyway. <laughs> oh, just do it, you baby. Okay, fine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no bliss for you. <laughs> oh, but I went. But I went bliss. Did you say that. you don't want to make the will save? Boy. I I, I said I'm probably gonna feel it anyway. Dax like just both just roll anyway. Uh, that's fine. Okay. I mean, you can always choose to just fail it anyway. Yeah, yeah I'll just take the fail. <laughs> Works is like. Mm, <laughs> then the next thing he's like. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, if you wish to have something to eat, please feel free to have it here. The bakery's occupied at the moment. Speaking of which, Dylan goes over the counter, reaches across, takes skull by the collar of his shirt, and. Plants a big kiss on his mouth. He's like, mm -hmm. They just leaves into okay. it, gets into it for a minute, and like pulls back a little bit. And he's like, uh, What's got into you? Not that I'm complaining. Uh, this oh is like, God. even with the flower, I'm sad and lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Works was always at Rowan's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Baby, don't look. <laughs> this like uh, magic bullshit uh, just what? causes a bubble to deflate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Works is like, eh, happy, 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 walks into the house, and the dragon's flying around a little bit and sees the bubble and like pops it. <laughs> Aww. It's like bubble. <laughs> just slashes it. Just like Aw, the happy bubble's gone. You still got them happy feelings. Art <laughs> <laughs> is just looking at you, uh, looking at you like, um... What the hell? Um... Happy bubbles, blissful feelings, and I came over here to share them with you. Just see the bubble is now like... 30 or some odd in the air, and the baby's just like, fluttering around him, just like, playing. You're bringing me your drug. Go away. 
<laughs> Don't bring them near my baby. <laughs> baby twin. <what> Wait. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, hold on. First off, I did not get this from Bahamut. <laughs> this time. Rowan's got a fireball on <laughs> like, like, right now. <laughs> I, hey, you came over to my house with you came over to my house under influence, and you're my baby. <laughs> I will burn you. Orcs just hangs his head and walks out the door. Aww. <laughs> just completely defeated. Rowan walks out onto the porch. And if any of them other drugged up people come over here, they're getting it too. <laughs> single it's tear falls. Single the baby. Single tear just falls down works his cheek. <laughs> Aww. Oh, man. Oh, man. Just see that the dragon's still just like batting at the bubbles, just like fluttering around in them. Getting my baby high with your bubbles. <laughs> Does Ron get bubbled? Um. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm going. I was just nice. <laughs> no. She's like, fuck your happiness. <laughs> Bubble just pops and sizzles. No. I it's all the bubbles. She burns all the moisture out of the air. <laughs> I what did you say, Rowan? I, have, I don't need bubbles. I have baby dragon. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, just to make sure nothing else happens to the baby, I go back out onto the front, and we're playing on the front porch now. Make baby gets fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> and get ready to burn anyone who steps on my grass. <laughs> it's gonna be bad for Gato. He has to go to your grass to get to his house. <laughs> Does Gato get bubbled? <laughs> uh, Gato, do you want a bubble or do you want to, uh. Gato's gonna get a bubble. You get the bubble and it just sits on your head and you think about the times your dad actually did praise you. Uh, good times <laughs> with your brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh,. How Boonja. <laughs> yep, how Boonja made you squeal and how you turned around and you made him oh, squeal. Oh my god. Bend down on such toes. I'm gonna oh shame where the wild goose goes. Oh my god. Or <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I was trying to drink water, thank you. <laughs> To see Kato get this big dumb grin, like everybody in the bar at this point, with the exception of uh, Talison and Siegfried, are just like mm, happy. Morks goes back to hitting his dummies. Why are you hitting yourself? Uncalled for. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I, I, I'm mentally hitting myself. <laughs> Physically, I'm hitting the practice dummies. Yeah, Jim, Nothing makes Tyson happy. Yeah, Puppies and rainbows. And Lancelot <laughs> cannot make Tyson happy. Yeah, Tyson. At this point, Go ahead, okay. Andrew. I was gonna say, it's at this point I'm in the ball full of happy grins and like, drug stupid, so it's sort of inching the way back out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's fun. Every single one of you have been high on multiple occasions. We've got uh -huh. the experience. We've got the others. Me? Don't, don't uh-uh me, Dak. Uh-uh, no experience. That was me. I was gonna say, it wasn't me! <laughs> no, you've all had the experience, Miss Flying with the dra- uh, with the- with the witch uh, That was completely different. No, that's an out-of-body drugged experience. Y'all been drugged. I'm the only one that's been pure. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that's undertaken for me. scientific expedition. Thank you very much. No, uh -huh. Actually, at this, at this point, the only two characters who haven't gotten high from a, from either a magical or a, like, alchemical means are Rowan and Camilla. <laughs> um, no, not Camilla. 
Who's a cocktail? Mm. I am <laughs> uptight. I will drink some alcohol from time to time, but I am uptight and I am raised. No, no, no. This was a <laughs> cocktail of various drugs Tim Roll set her up with. Oh, yeah, that's uh... right, Tim Roll. In order to distract uh, Jarl Mail for a minute. I mean, it wasn't pleasant for Cam. She spent like a good few hours getting it flushed out of her system by Sigbert, but. Yep. Uh, regardless, Fion, you do know Talus, and he's like sitting over in a corner, and like he batted his bubble away. And he's just very calmly drinking. You can see he's got like a slight smirk on his face, but it's more of like, look at these fucking morons instead of like I'm genuinely happy <laughs> come now must you enjoy other people's no well, I couldn't say misfortune but I still can't help but feel this bit of schadenfreude here he looks at you for a second and he just holds his cup up I mean, you can see it's, like, mostly empty. Well, I suppose that's one way to enjoy things. Just enjoy responsibility. Just enjoy responsibly. <laughs> he looks at you for a second. Gives you a smile. Taps his glass once and it refills. Very well, who am I to argue? <laughs> he goes, sit down. Good day to you, then? No, 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 no. Oh, of course. But she sits down. He's like, I promised you a story, didn't I? So you did. He says, you want to know why he's like that? Oh, yes, do tell. That sweet little ball of innocence. That lovely, lovely Lancelot. Everyone's so enamored with him. They love watching him prattle and dance. The little charm that he provides, and to tell us and smile as he drinks a bit more. Oh, I love him to bits. Every little ounce of him, I can't. I can't even imagine life without him. But it's not who he is. He's a broken little boy. Someone who's watched himself lose more than. So many others. And he and your little friend over in the bakery are exactly the same. They lie to themselves about the pain that they went through day in and day out. And it's killing them inside. But it would kill them if wonder... they didn't. Well, the owner's going to re-roll her will save with a plus two circumstance bonus for how much of a fucking downer, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 21. The bottle just straight up pops. And at that uh, point, like, as it pops, he just hands you his glass. What, what did you say at the tail end of that arc? That, um, uh, Lancelot is lying to himself the same way you lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that it is slowly killing him, mm. but it would kill him faster if he was honest. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, who isn't here? She just downs the whole thing in one gulp. He takes it back, and he's like, damn, what are you looking for that? And he like, opens a flask and starts pouring it in. And he looks at her and he goes, Look... I don't mean to be a downer or anything like that. In fact, I was a bard before the calamity. And he starts to drink very slowly. But I take care of those boys now. They're the only family they have, and they're the only family that I have anymore. Mm. I love each. I feel the same way about that. I love each and every single one of them. And it hurts me to know that 
They've lost so much. But someone has to keep them honest. And someone has to be a straight face and sensible for when they try to dig in too deep. Yes, I suppose that's fair. Drinks again. Sets his cup down. Skull, dear, could you get a cup from here as well? Skull gets up and walks over and starts pouring. Like, the bar is happy and joyful. They're messing with Kato now and, like, teasing him. Not, like, bad teasing. Like, they're congratulating you. Because, <laughs> uh, you, you basically regaled them about what happened um, in Uldan, so now they're just... We're just having fun. Uh-huh. Well, I don't mean to pry into your own affairs. It's clear that you two have lost all on the calamity, but... I do wonder if someone who wears a mask of her own is fit to be taking care of someone who has to mask her own feelings. Talison looks up and he, said, and he points to each of them. Galahad was always an orphan. He grew up in a church in Corthus, surrounded by a loving adopted family of some 40 other orphans and the petitioners of the church that took care of him. Siegfried was always strong. They put him over in the guard and had him patrolling between Corthus and Ishgard during that time. Percival. It's always been a bit of a Casanova. I'm sure you can see that. He happened to be away at Ishgard with uh, his uncles. Just getting a feel for court life and everything else. Lancelot had an adoring family. Doting, sweet, do anything for him. And Galahid, well, Galahid was a noble from Ishgard. Went down to Corthus, was one of the good ones, helped to serve, wanted nothing more than to better the lives of everyone around. Wanted to stand strong, tall amongst them and lift them up from whatever squalor that we might be facing to protect them. And then the calamity hit and it was all gone in an instant. I remember coming through the town only a few hours after the explosion was rocked through everything and the fires burned. I found Galahad weak and almost dead under a mound of corpses, spared from death only by the cushions that their bodies provided. I found Lancelot weeping around his parents and his siblings and a house charred to ash. How he survived, I will never know. Galahid? Well, I found him clutched up against Siegfried. The two of them crying like babies because everything that they had known as children was gone and they knew in that moment that they were weak and powerless. 
Percival. I found him naked, almost burned, but were it not for his own heightened resistance to fire, standing there unable to talk in utter shock. Bald as the day he was born. It took them four years before they ever even muttered a word to me. And I wept like a baby when they did. At that point he takes his cup and starts to drink. I wouldn't know what it'd be like in Corpus since the Calamity. After all, the Calamity was only a few short moons ago for me still. Fionn swirls the alcohol in her glass before downing it. But it's taking its toll on everyone. That yes. much is plain to see. He just holds the cup up to you. His still full. Clinks it with yours. Well, here's to rebuilding. Here's to rebuilding. At that point, he gets up and he says, I do like you and your compatriots. Don't get me wrong. But, I have to be honest, because no one else is. He just smiles and he leaves. Fionn gives quite possibly the thinnest smile she can. <sighs> I'd better get ready then. Take care of them for me, dear. Skull nods. She stands and returns to her house. Does anybody else have anything they want to do? Besides snogging a cute cat boy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say he's, he Just probably off. stopped after about ten minutes. <laughs> That's more than enough time for snogging. That's angrily punching my dummies for uh, uh, forever. Why? 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 <laughs> What's it, like? Like just punches enough to let like a small explosion of mega flare. <laughs> like. Ah! <laughs> mm. As Fion passes all of this, she's just too absorbed in her own thoughts to even. Raise an eyebrow, much less look over. So I was gonna ask Fiona about identifying those bows, but after the, the, the drug episode in the end. That was a lot. I mean, I'd still try to follow her. Yeah. Uh, um. The Escada? Mm hmm. Oh, Sounds like you me. wanted to say something. Yeah. No. Uh, all right. So Rowan is still just playing with her baby dragon. You gonna say? You gonna get to Fiona? Uh, Yedrin? Uh, how do you... <laughs> yeah, we're playing with fire now, me and the dragon. Yeah. Alright. Should I be making a post perception checks or <laughs> if you want to. I'm actually going to just gingerly walk over there at some point. <laughs> I'm just trying to think I it's probably like see Fion pass by and base Hey Fion, do you have a minute? Fion stops and turns her head. Yes, what is it? Um, just need your if you have a minute or two and you don't mind, need your help with uh, 
magic items we picked up while fighting some Amalta. Or specifically a bow. Do you have a spare ether? Mm. I didn't even understand what you said. A spare ether. Yes, Diff. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yes. Ask exactly what you mean by that. As in... an ether, the drink. If you drink happens to have one. As a means of payment. Implica implied. Sadly, no. Well, I'll do what I can then. But... Don't put any rush on it, there's just curiosity and maybe right. useful, maybe not. And I'll give a more detailed investigation once we're done with this. Yeah. Upcoming for it into Amnipa. Okay. I'll probably just pass out a bow from the haversack to like look at at Alicia. Alright. I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah. She takes it into her house, sets it on the table, and runs some basic detection. Okay. So you're just doing a spellcraft on it? Yep. Uh, no detect magic, right? Yes, she does. Oh, you're detecting magic? Alright. So. Mm hmm. Okay, so you look down at the bow, you examine it, and you go, okay, okay, and you, you pick it up, and you pull it back, and even as the strand pulls back without an arrow, you see a little tip of fire start to appear where the arrow point would be if you were using it. Mind you, it is a large-sized composite longbow. You realize it's finely made, so it takes you a few moments, but you realize it's a plus-one flaming composite longbow. Hmm. Fion experiments with the uh, draw strength to see just how m much force is required to pull. Um... Well, it is a large size, so it's probably as big as you are. Well, she's just gauging it with a few ginger tugs. She's not actually going to try and use it. Um, you start to pull it back, and you find you can pull it back relatively easy. You're guessing anybody with a with a average amount of strength could probably use this bow. Hmm. Simple enough construction, but he then taps her chin. Well, I suppose each will be interested. After getting her things together, she returns to the bar and turns the bow back over. All right. Um, at this point, it's probably getting close to dark. Or rather, it is dark at this point. And Adol has closed the bakery. He is <laughs> red-faced and just walking away. Fionn... <laughs> Can't help but resist the urge to remark, twice in one day, lucky you, as she passes. Just... I'm sorry, I can't help it. He's just like, he's just shaking. He's just like. <laughs> 
Dex peeking out of a bakery, red faced. <laughs> it just starts running. Ah, oh, the poor dear. Lancelot surprised him with a uh, rather innocent kiss earlier. Doc just kind of like crosses her hands over her mouth. Nod slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you might want to know. Don't want you getting the wrong ideas from what I say, after all. Shakes her head. <laughs> Scampers away. <laughs> ah, young love. She says as she walks into the room with her own young love. <laughs> nah. Yeah, she's an elf. She can say that sort of thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you see. Why the elves are old? <laughs> they age you know, they have a prolonged lifespan. They age differently, my dear. Older and, and better looking than all of you guys for a while, but you know, okay. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> We're not old right now. I know, I'm just playing. At that point, Han just like picks up his glass, looks at Fiona, and he says, Uh, maybe you should get your companions ready to travel in the morning unless we go on our own. No, I suppose you're right. Enough time has been spent on Next this rather pleasant mummery. But... At this point, you hear... Just all the bubbles start popping. And everyone's like, Huh? Like they're coming out of a stupor. And I suppose that's it for the memory. I mean, Adrian, she sets the bow down. As would be expected of an Amalja weapon, it is blessed with the powers of flame. Other than that, I don't see how you expect to use it considering it is, well, Size run on Malja. I have a couple of ideas, but perhaps another time. Yes, perhaps another time. I'll hang on to it for now, though. So thank you very much for looking into it, Fionn. You're quite welcome. Any road, Han, feel free to sleep at the inn here. Oh, yes, um, he's planning on it, and then he just kind of slides out. Of course, no charge, even for the largest suites. Anything for the man who has helped us like this? Very well, and he just kind of walks out. Very spy to Han. Again. <laughs> uh, so I think it's real leaving tomorrow. Indeed. Everyone needed a day of relaxation. Right about now, everyone's and... going to poke her head in because she's looking for food now. <laughs> you poke your head in, you see the bubbles are gone. Everyone's just kind of having quiet, relaxed conversation. Skull looks at you. You note the bakery is closed. And he goes, yes, bro? Just looking for some food. And the dragon's on my shoulder, nestled in my hair. Aww. Okay. Are, are, are you guys all non-stone now? I mean, works comes over his eyes, glassy like shit. What the hell were you guys doing? Hunger's, that's, that's my fault. I wanted to calm the Croix down, so he pulls out a little pipe. It's just, it's, it's magic. Uh, it produces bubbles that calm people down and give them happy thoughts. It became rather contagious. I, I noticed, and he tried to share. I just don't like to be out of control. Well, no, neither do I. 
unfortunately, Tallison had a rather sobering conversation, so I was really to the effect rather quickly. I, I just chuckle a little bit because I'm like, get go figure. Theon just keeps a straight face. Okay. Rowan's gonna plop down in the plop down, I guess, and just take a look. And so, what do we got in the menu here, guys? Skull looks around. He's like, "Well, these fine fellows haven't ordered a meal yet," and he kind of pushes a menu towards you. Um, and you see now that you're you took a seat and you're sitting between Percival and Lancelot, and Lancelot just is like, "Hey, Rowan," just smiling at you. Rowan's got to put her arms around Lancelot and hold them with her dragon in her, against her face. The dragon hops over Skull, on yeah. the tops of Lancelot's head. It's like, oh. If you wish, there's rather quite a lot of fresh fish, so it might be worth putting it on a special. Oh, no more fish. I, I just remember work smelling like fish for like four days after the boat ride. Uh, scold. Perhaps I should suggest he gets a uh, bath then. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't notice anything. I just noticed the glassy eye. <laughs> that but, point, uh, Skull just kind of goes, uh, alright, dear, I'll make a note of that. And he goes, Tamaris! Make something, uh, special for Rowan. And he just kind of waves back from the kitchen. You see these pair of black gloves on his hands. Will do. At least he's wearing gloves. Yeah, there's this. <laughs> exactly right. You just hear the sudden like chopping of knives and this flurry of motion from the back and then you hear him call out and say run what name your three favorite foods bacon 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 and bacon, bacon. bacon. <laughs> did you say bacon bacon <laughs> and bacon yeah bacon steak uh <laughs> bacon <laughs> <laughs> bacon steak Steak wrapped in bacon. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, Kato. Yes, I. I no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At that point, he calls out and he goes, "With your steak, do you like it cooked with anything? Garlic, mushrooms, bacon." <laughs> <laughs> I oh, think we need to have an intervention with Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan Ro just chuckled and just hugging Lancelot. What you do, Lancelot? He says, oh, he's like, well, he looks at you and he goes, well, I accidentally kissed that cute cat boy in the bakery. But, um, I feel bad. He seems so embarrassed. He was adorable. And honestly, I'm just having such a good time. It's so good to see you all again. Like a second family. He just leans into you. And Rowan just holds him tight and kind of like starts rubbing his back like, like you know, you would for a kid. I'm very happy to see you too. Mm -hmm. Fiona exits you stage fun. left. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I nudge Percival with my foot and said, it's good to see you too, Fireboy. He's like, it's good to see you too, Ron. <sighs> yeah. What do you think of my dragon? Um, you see the smile on his face kind of fade away a little bit. He goes, it is very adorable. Um, but... He swallows. <laughs> um, I have a, a hard time with dragons. 
for you, I would do anything, but I was at ground zero at the Calamity. Very true. But he's just a little baby. And there's bigger dragons right now in the world. Uh, yes. There are. And I've known one or two very good-natured dragons. Really? Because, you know, eventually North find out what is kind of going on with my abilities and uh, what happened. It's around this point, like you're it took a minute to get in the conversation, but um, Tamias comes out with your plate and he says well, I tried to do something special for you, Rowan. And he plants it down, and the first thing that he puts out is a steak. And it is a long New York strip steak cooked to a perfect medium rare. There's sautéed onions along the side of it and mushrooms chopped super thin that have been like drenched in a garlic butter right next to it. The top of it has a tarragon and blue cheese sauce that has been buttered and is sitting kind of like in a little tray to the side ready to be spread onto the top of the steak, which is glistening with diamond sear marks as well. And he said, now I know this doesn't have bacon, but I think you're going to really like this. And he pulls out a second plate Ooh. And as he sets it down, it's basically this ball of mashed potatoes that's been fried and wrapped in bacon. And he splits it open slightly, and this burst of this white fragrant cheese just starts oozing out of it with little flakes of a uh, green onion coming out of it. And then on the side, you can see that he's put together like this collection of a uh, vegetable medley for you. Oh, this looks amazing. I I'm, 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 yeah, I'm good. At that point, he just pulls out a little glass and pours you a, <laughs> pours you a white wine. Thank you so much. He's like, enjoy. <laughs> he goes, this is like, I don't think I've cooked that much bacon in a long time. <laughs> I'll just wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> As you wish. I don't know why I have an addiction to bacon, but good. <laughs> that point, uh, personally. That land into my steak. Yeah, at that point, the little the baby dragon like just hops back over on top of your head. You see, you see Percival actually flinch a little and then he looks back at it and he's like, it's very cute. You can see mo like most of the sons of the calamity are reacting the same way with the exception of Lancelot, who's just like, like every now and then like playing with it, like poking at it as it like snips at his fingers a little. Rowan's gonna Rowan's gonna take take the dragon into her arms and whisper into in, in into his ear to go rest. He Time just, to take He looks at you for a second and kind of blinks and nods and then he just kinda dissipates. Rowan's hand goes protectively to where she can feel him on her mm -hmm. and just rest and then goes to eating her dinner. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, Percival. He goes... I don't know what Amity was like, and I just, I don't want to upset you or anybody else. He goes, no, 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 no. Uh, 
Rowan, I, I can see obviously that you're very close to to Dragon, and I want you to be able to cherish whatever time you have with it. it just looking at it, it seems to consider you a mother, and oh. far be it from me to say who can be your family and who can't. I... <laughs> Look around at what, who's there from the, the, the mayhem. I'm like, yeah. I, I have a weird family. Adopted family. And he says, so do I. <laughs> he looks at Lancelot and the rest of the group and then he just looks down. He goes, they're weird and we get into so much trouble and we do strange things, but they're all I have. And I'd do anything for them. Now, just don't get sappy on me now. <laughs> he just laughs. Oh. Well, I mean, if you wanted me to get sappy, you need to pull, you need to ply me with a bit more liquor. I'm not the bartender, but, you know, if you want to drink, it on me. <laughs> just laughs. No, I think I've had quite enough for the evening, especially with the, uh, the bubbles floating around. The mood enhancements? Yes, that. Likewise, he nudges you a little bit and goes, I wouldn't want to work since be getting jealous either. I think you might be a little bit upset with me, but I just can't. I can't be around that kind of stuff. I, I, I hold on so tight to everything mm -hmm. that I don't want to not be in control of something. Especially when, especially when you find out the thing of your nightmares is real. Percival looks down and he goes. I can understand that feeling far too well. And I just want you to know because we're being honest and tell us and would kill me if I wasn't honest. I have nightmares and I have problems. And I know what it's like to be so completely helpless that Every now and then, I look for something for release to help me forget. Most of the time, it's alcohol. It's just... It's so easy to drink and forget and to have a moment of respite. I won't lie, I've dabbled with herbs and spices here and there. But like you said, when you're out of control like that, you can't be in the moment for everybody else. Last time I kind of let a little bit of anger and emotion get in the way I almost burned off Works' face. So... Whereas there are times where it's nice to be free, there's times where most of the time where you just have to be where I have to. My nightmares. I, I don't, I've never experienced what you went through. I was in the, I was in the Thermitage Guild in Old Dove. I was sequestered, basically. And... You know, the nightmares that I have are world ending. Me being the cause of it with a dragon larger than the world itself. Mm -hmm. I saw that same dragon just a few days ago. Percival just so, kind of thinks for a moment and goes. Uh, 
Works wants to go up to Boreal. He thinks he might find some answers for himself there, and that there might be some answers for me there too. Percival kind of starts answering both things and he says, I don't know if I would fear that dragon of yours anymore, Ron, since by all accounts it saved your life and then he makes a motion to you, gave you a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should probably tell my dad that he's a grandpa now. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh god, I could just imagine my father's face right now. Hey, dad. Oh god. What? Oh god. He's gonna, he, he's, gonna, he's gonna kill me first before he even say anything else. <laughs> At that point, he, he just kind of like he holds up a hand and he goes, Um. Scaring your father aside. Uh, works is special to you, isn't it? Yeah, I've been a bit of a bitch lately, but yeah, I, I somehow I've loved that idiot. Then, if he wants to go to Voril and seek answers, maybe you should support him. He's obviously been supporting you through everything, hasn't he? Oh, I, I, I have every of going to Voriel. That, that was never in question. He just thinks that we might find answers for both, for both me and him up there. Well, it is a dark place with a lot of secrets and cabals and organizations and Things better left undisturbed. Oh, well, that's not dark and scary in any way, shape, or form. I'm mostly talking about the men and women of Oriel themselves. They are... Have you ever met one? No. For... Give me for saying this. Do, um, he goes, I want you to imagine. Alive, aren't I? Do what? I said, I'm gonna get eaten alive up there, aren't I? No, um, I want you to imagine a society of people that are as blunt as Arcelus, mm -hmm. as non-emotive as Brahm, and so sure that they are on the right of it that they could probably make an Ish Guardian blush. Assholes. Great. Yes, they are assholes. But they are very effective assholes. <laughs> well, not so much I care that they're assholes, I just want answers. They would probably give you an answer if you asked them or did them a favor. <sighs> Granted, uh, out of character, did you ever tell this? Did Works or Kato ever let slip that you were the guys that crashed that ship into West Wind? Fuck no. 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 Nobody is stupid enough to do that. Yeah, none of us opened our mouth. Not even any of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we just got the yeah we got the flack out of there, and we didn't mention that again except when we go see him in uh, Gridania. That never happened, right? Yeah, no, nothing happened. Had a smooth sailing right on the, the Gridania. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. <It was> perfect. <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. 
regardless, he goes, Well, if you can tell them anything about the Garleans, or, you know, have done anything that would have damaged the Garleans in any way, they'll probably do whatever you want. They'll probably tell you whatever you want to know. Oh, yeah, that was totally us. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're not even there, Works. Uh, Rowan, I know. <laughs> Rowan just chuckles a little bit. I'm like, I'm sure we can come up with something. Not too worried about that. Uh, shall I tell you a story about them? Please. So, I haven't been up there. This is hearsay, but it was mostly in a paper. About... I believe it was nine years ago. The Garleans attempted to evade Eorzea through the northmost point, through Voreal. They came with the... Uh, I believe it's the fifth largest armada we've ever seen. The king of Voreal and his people were besieged for a day. Then night fell, and in absolute darkness, they routed that entire armada and sent it fleeing. No one to this day knows what the hell they did. The only thing that they know is when daylight broke, the men of Voreal walked in to the light, their mouths covered in Garlean blood, and their entire bodies stained black and red. Well, that's not dark and scary in any way, shape, or form. He says, like I said, it's all hearsay, and I've met some noble and friendly Vorilians, but they all have an edge to them that you should be aware of. You also mentioned dragons. He takes a very long drink, and he says, We, uh, wandered into a nest out in the Dravinian Highlands. And he takes a swallow. We, uh, we thought we were all gonna die. But they asked us what we were doing, and why we were there, and... After a few moments, they just let us back out. So they didn't want, they didn't wish us any harm at all. Well, I mean, dragons live for thousands of years. Not all of them are as nasty as some can be. I mean, they're like humans. Oh, humans. They're like us. You know, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them are assholes. Some of them want to destroy the world. And some of them are idiots like... Idiots like... Us. <laughs> idiots like us who try to save it. Percival just laughs... He goes, all right. Well, I should let you and your dragon rest up. It was wonderful to see you again. And I will have to tell works that I lost to the better man. <laughs> Ron chuckles, gives per Percival a kiss on his cheek and said, yeah, sometimes I wonder. I'm, I'm kidding. I just kid. <laughs> you just... We're, we're probably going to be leaving in the morning. So, stay as long as you 
he just pats your hand and he says, well, let me go find the grumpy cat and get the rest of us ready for bed. And Lancelot's like, Rowan? Yes, Lancelot. I hope you're safe and happy. And he like looks at you, he's got these like, big puppy eyes, and he looks down and goes, and, um, well, tell Dak, and I think his name is Adol, and I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. I just... I can't help myself. Rowan just pats the side of, the strokes the side of his cheek and is like, you know what? I'm sure they are perfectly fine with it, and we love you just the way you are. And he looks up and he's like, really? Absolutely. When I found out you guys were on, on your way over here, you and Percival, I was excited to see the both of you. And he just smiles. He's like, I'm really happy to hear that. And I'm not the only one. Or, you know, in the morning, seek out the little the little potato over there herself. She would love to see you too. Yes. I'll make sure to see her before we leave or you guys leave. Very good. And he goes he looks up and he gives you a hug. And he goes, Your baby's really cute. I know, is he? I I give him a please. Go get some rest. We'll see you in the morning. He's like, okay. He just starts to wander off. Then he looks over at Kato. He says, "Hey, big guy." Mm hmm. He like turns and grabs your face, and he's like, "You're beautiful and handsome, and everyone loves you." He kisses your forehead. <laughs> Confused but blushing at the same time. And he like pulls the new and we squeeze. And I don't know you very well, but I love you anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very much That's definitely my thought. <laughs> he just looks up at you and he smiles and he says, I'll take care of everybody else. You have a lovely family. Mm, sure. <laughs> Rowan's gonna finish her dinner. Thank him for an awesome thing uh, to, to Maya's for an awesome dinner and go find works. Person who has pointedly like has been pointedly keeping your meal warm through the entire conversation. Like, he basically, like, every now and then, like, he would just touch your plate, and you would see, like, little flames start, like, flicker above it, and it would keep everything warm. <laughs> I, I would be just happy that I didn't see any fire spells, so. Yeah. So. I'm gonna go head out to Works. Works is on the ground in front of the training dummies. <laughs> works. Because you said that. You got to roll some fortitude save. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay, works. <laughs> you are down to training, dummy. Um, <laughs> you basically, you actually did manage to mega flare it once through your fist. <laughs> um, and the reason you're on the ground is after you destroyed it. And the beam went off and nearly hit the dogs. Sophia came over and kicked you in your balls as hard as she could. Oh, oh, good. And then stomped on them for threatening her dogs. Oh. <laughs> Though she did very pointedly give you a kiss on the forehead and said, Thank you for getting me um, for getting me safe here, but it's like if you ever threaten my dogs again, I'm cutting them off. Probably for the best. <laughs> Just came and talked like. <laughs> Point your training dummies towards the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I, I, I'm, just, I'm looking down at you, and I'm just, I, I, I'm like face palming and shaking my head. Mind you, I, you didn't see that entire bit, Rowan. This no, was maybe like an hour. <laughs> earlier. I on the floor, and I'm just like, oh, and and the dummy, and I was like, don't even really want to know what happened. Um. I by the was way, feeling like it. By, by the way, you're completely fine. Works. You just like laid there because you had no idea what else to do with yourself. <laughs> um. Just. I, I was a little emotional for being so stupid. Um. I accidentally mega flared my dummy. Um. Sophia came over and kicked me in the balls because it kind of went towards her and the dogs. Was not expecting that to happen at all. Not the kicking the balls, but the, uh, you know, explosion from my fist. And, 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 and people wonder why I do those kind of things and don't want to be around those kind of things. I know. No, this was because I was feeling stupid for what I did earlier. So what were you feeling stupid for at that point? Just... I need to make a list here. <laughs> no, just when I, when I came over earlier and... Just... I, I left feeling pretty stupid. So I decided to go take out some aggressions on the training dummy. Which is now destroyed. I see that. So how's your night been? It was interesting. Had a nice dinner. I hung out with Percival and Lancelot. How is Percival? He's good. Uh, he's conceded victory to you, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Don't make me regret that. I. It, like I said, all I want to do is you know have another battle with him because that was pretty fun. <sighs> well, you ever guys, you guys want to, it's up to you, as long as you're not, as long as you guys aren't measuring anything for anything else, it's all I care about. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a fun battle. Right. Honestly, I wouldn't mind having another challenge. I sit down on the ground too. So are you just gonna lay here on the floor this entire time and and works? You need a bath. I'm aware. What the what? hell are you getting stuck with fish? Do you know how <sighs> sick I'm getting a fish? I never want a fish again. I don't want to eat a fish. Yeah. I don't want to see a fish. I don't want to smell a fish. Bl blame Mark. He he <laughs> went fishing again and then left me with, with the load. You know, that's the second time you've been left, left with fish. I know. I need to stop doing that. Because even, even I'm starting to not like fish anymore. <laughs> and to answer your question is why I'm still down here, this guy's pretty nice tonight. Roll a 1d20 works. It's going to start raining. <laughs> <laughs> It's cloudy. There's some stars, uh, but it's cloudy. It's not a horrible night, but it's still nice. Rowan shifts around and lays down, looking up at the sky next to you. I know I'm an idiot a lot, and sometimes I say and do stupid things, but... It doesn't change how I feel about you at all. I know, and I know that I can be in a little bitch from time to time, and, you know, hey. I've been moody lately, putting up with me. Dragon bullshit? Dragon bullshit. Well, I mean, it's not <laughs> dragon bullshit. It's just... The vision of your, the, you know, those visions coming true, I guess? When you see it outside of the 
astral plane up in the sky and it blows up a fucking primal? Yes! Yeah. Nah, I can completely understand you there. I I'd be a little weirded out too. I mean, I think I'd be more concerned if you weren't weirded out by it. I think... I can't get any more weirded out than I already am at this point. I don't think that's humanly possible. Elvenly possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that attitude. I elbow you really hard. <laughs> so, uh, Percival told me about uh, about the people from Boreal. Uh, that needs to get a little bit stronger before going up there because it's a um, yeah. They sound like they sound like assholes, and they sound like dangerous assholes. Let me but, guess they're bad let me guess they're batshit crazy. But we tell them that we took that we, we took down a, a Garlean uh, airship and maybe we do the West job. We probably will have a pretty good uh, good in with them. Oh wait, Camilla already wants to do that. Never mind. Mm -hmm. So basically we would use that as a bargaining chip. Hmm. I'm sure we'll have other other run ins as well. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I, I'm not planning to go right away. It's just, it's something to look to plan forward to. There's some other things I have to do first. <laughs> what the heck are you doing? Deck is using Bliss. Who is she no. using it on? Three guesses. No one that gets reached. None of you. <laughs> what? What? It doesn't hit anybody. <laughs> okay. Feel free to continue unless you guys are done. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> well, whenever, you know, I don't know. I don't know who, who would come or whatnot, but Percival also mentioned he ran into a uh, a nest of dragons that let them go. Might be interesting to find them as well. You, could, you can, might know something we don't. Dragons live for a very long time. Yes, they do. I mean, heck, I'll still be young and be old. I mean, I'll still look this good, but, you know. I got it. Wow. <laughs> I nudged him again. Like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on you. That's all there's to it. I know. I know but, you do. Well, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I do enjoy it. Yeah, I know, because you're a glutton for punishment. Yeah, I am. And I would have burned your ass too if you close. Just so you know. So your ass would have been burned, your balls have been hit. Hey! It's yeah, that would, that, would, that would have been a good combo. I'd, I'd like to go one day without, you know, being bodily pain. Nobody hurt you while you're. What are you talking about? That's like three days of peace. In, in, in stuck with a lot of different people, but, you know. As far as I know, unless you got a splinter, nobody hurt you in three days. <laughs> okay, I like to go a solid week without being in bodily pain. Okay, that works. Just hear Bahamut in the back of your head. You're in the wrong line of work. I know! Are you talking your dragon bullshit right now? Or primal bullshit? Yeah, my, yeah, my dragon bullshit likes to, remind, likes to remind me how much, you know... My dragon bush likes to rear its ugly head at the wrong possible time. I'm gonna look down and say, you could come out now. He pops out and is like, 
It's like floating sleepily. Rowan grabs and snuggles up next to him and works. I said, and then my dragon. This. <laughs> At least your dragon's adorable. My dragon just, you know, isn't. Your dragon wants to ride you like a bodysuit and then rip you out so you can back. Just your Pretty Bahamut. much. You just your Bahamut at that point is like, Bitch, I'm precious. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Bitch, I'm fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but I wonder whose dragon is bigger. Um, I mean, are we really gonna are you really gonna measure this right now? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty I'm pretty sure you win. I <laughs> uh, know. Um, no, what we are gonna do is we're gonna get the rest. Uh, yeah. You mind if uh, I come stay at your place tonight? That's fine. Seeing All how right. you know, I want to sleep in my own bed. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't put a lot of money into my bed, so it's not the most comfortable. Um, Alright, well, with that, uh, we fast forward to the morning. Uh, the suns are all kind of like lined up at the front waiting for you guys with you all kind of situated with a cart with Han. Uh, Adol's Light waving goodbye, and Ark still standing there. Like he's still. It looks like he's like half dead, with how tired ah. he is. He's like, "Hey, so." Dex just waving in his all smiles. This is probably the happiest you've seen her all month, maybe. Well, well I'm just gonna whisper over at over at works. You think? Think? You think? Come on. What do you think? I'm just I mean, like. I, it, then do you think? I'm just like 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 it must have been really good. So that that means she's no longer a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> You both just see you both just see Ark looking at you. And he's giving you this like hardcore look. It's like if you say another word, I'm gonna kill you both in cold blood. We're happy for her. Shut up. I, I'm just I, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna look I'm just gonna look back at Ark and go, uh-huh. But it's so cute and so sweet, you know, smiling. He's like <laughs> He's just looking at her like I'm far too tired for this bullshit right now. <laughs> Dude, no one's gonna be. Don't happen to overhear what they were talking about. Yes, you do, because you're all sitting in the cart. So. Yep. I didn't think we'd gotten in the okay. cart yet, or at least you're near the cart. Who knows? Well, I'd say like you guys are all kind of like around the cart saying goodbyes to everybody. Keon just pinches the bridge of her nose. Rowan's gonna slip away just for a second and go hug Percival and Lancelot. Yeah. Zach just kind of tackles Lancelot in a hug. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk up to, to Percival and extend my hand and go. You know, I still want that rematch one day. Just grabs your hand and he's like... Okay. It's like, make sure you're not Bernays. Make sure you survive long enough to get to me. Yes. I'll try, but... We both know if we go against the champion, that's not gonna happen. Love that attitude. I saw what he did to Raban. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be optimistic about it here. I'll go for a second. <laughs> or hopefully he dies of old age. I don't think that's happening. It's like, probably not. Either way. It's goes, good to see you again. 
Yeah, good to see you too. Take it easy. You too. Be safe, Percival. Oh, and do me a favor. Yes. Hit Galahad upside the head for me for at least once. I mean, we tend to do that daily, so... Just give him one for me. He just does it right then. <laughs> I mean, he's standing yeah. right next to you. He just give slaps him. Uh, it's at this point Han's like shaking his head and he's like is everybody ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm also Aye. here. Just waves in the back of the court. Uh, he only summoned Tamias for this purpose. Actually, no, wait, no, she hasn't summoned anything yet. Yeah, he just... He sets the cart into motion and then he goes, by the way, Fionn? Yes. Who's manning Pandemonium? Good question. <laughs> I love that very <laughs> pregnant pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hells. <laughs> is date going or is Date staying? Date is staying. So are you going to leave Date in charge of the bakery, the bar, and the inn? I thought Ark would help. Where's Ark going with? Ark is passed out. <laughs> That's true. Get some sleep and then work in the bar. No. <laughs> well, I'm doing some research that will hopefully bear fruit, even if our best leads don't. He goes. Uh, so it won't be a problem after this, I'm sure. He goes. There you just got so he goes. Dak. Yeah. You have a really big family, don't you? Oh, yeah, of course I do. Why don't you tell Date to call them and have them come out and help him? Hmm. Hey, Date. That's a fair thought. <laughs> there's, there's like, yeah? Um, could do you see if some of the others will come and help out with the bar and the bakery while we're gone? It'd be really mean just to see you do it. Well, I, uh, he goes, well, I called Adiphage and the twins. The twins are apparently closed this week. Well, that'd be really great. Yeah, yeah, it would be. I can't wait for you to get back. I hope you guys are safe. Thank you. Fionn pipes up on the Link Pearl. Don't worry. We'll be taking good care of Dak. We're just like, there's a silence, and he's like, there's a very quiet, like, you better. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just silence. Okay, so, uh, you guys are on your way to Amphidor. It is 11.10 here. I have to get up in five hours, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, yeah, good time to call it. Bye. Bye, Doc.